Today's gonna be a beautiful day to go harvest some corn here. 63 degrees. Yesterday was 50, but it felt like 40 out there. And Saturday, Iowa game's on. Oh, it's gonna be perfect. So I got the tractor started up at the shed. I had a full load from last time up there that the elevator was closed, so I left it at the shed. My dad's gonna hop in that. He's gonna take it to the elevator. And then hopefully I can get this combine all cleaned up and uh, start picking some corn and have a full load by the time he gets down to this farm here. And I appreciate you guys watching and following along as we get harvesting this fall. All, all this corn we're picking right now is my corn, but the last field of corn, which will be like 50 acres, is gonna be Spencer's corn. And so that'll be all about kind of him and his crop the first year and stuff. And he has a separate YouTube channel where he'll film definitely a video or two on that. And then I'll also film it too, so. I didn't realize this when I first bought the combine, but you guys actually informed me that combines use some oil um, when they're running full throttle all day. I never realized that. Oh, right, you guys want to see a cold start? This combine, all 60, 70 series combines, they start, they have an awesome cold start. You guys got to check it out. Now about, of this 46 acres, about 30 acres were pattern tiled, the bottom pieces. Really in the, there's a bit different lighter soil type on the rolling ground up there that we had some, a couple, like four or five different tile passes on the back end of that. So I'm gonna be really curious to see if I can notice, cause those were like 60, 70 foot apart on the lighter ground. It'll be really interesting to see if there's a yield difference in between those, if we went too far apart on the lighter ground. We are gonna have some really good corn on corn. This is the piece where I thought would do a lot better than a 22 acre piece and she's doing her. I'm doing my first strip through here on the 109 day and it's pretty wet. And I didn't think it'd be this wet, but that's good. That's good that we got. You can see there's still some green on the plants. That's good plant health. That's the fungicide doing its thing. And uh, I like I like to see that, honestly. But that, that strip through the field averaged 255, which is, that's 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 the best yield I've ever had, especially for corn on corn. Corn on corn is super super tough. Well, it's a little tougher to grow. So, and I apologize. Sometimes I get really happy and really mad about yield. I'm just I guess I should say I'm just really passionate about it. And last year was a rough rough year, and I was destined to come out better and do everything right this year. And so finally we're getting to that point where we're starting to do things right. So. Change of plans. This corn is good, but it's got really good plant health. It's 109 day and it's still pretty darn wet. I planted my other 113 day corn about 15, 16 days before this. It didn't get many GDUs before this, but Spencer is over there. He hand tested it at like 16 or 16.5. So it should be a point wetter than this. And since we only have one wagon, this is about five miles away, I will literally go pick I pass down and back and be full in about eight minutes when it takes my dad like 45 minutes round trip. So I'll be sitting for 40 minutes versus the field we're gonna go to is literally like a mile away from the co-op or half a mile away from the co-op. So we can go a lot quicker. So that's the game plan. We're gonna move the uh, combine over there and, uh, and get harvesting that stuff at home. So this is the hill I got stuck on here that he's climbing. It is steep and the camera doesn't do it justice. I got like right to where he is and started power hopping. Now we decided leave it in field gear, which would be 12th gear. Once you get to 13th, it starts getting to the road gear clutch pack and just walk up it right in 12th gear, full throttle. And it just, it doesn't have a problem with one wagon. Okay, so if you guys watched last video, you probably know what happened to this wagon. If not, go watch last video. But uh, Spencer's got her fixed up here. The, the main thing that broke, these are like little shock absorbers. I don't think they're super structural, but I think you'd have a really bad ride if these aren't in. So anyway, that broke. And the reason why these broke is because these two blocks, this whole thing, little sled looking thing, when you pull, it pulls this way. These two blocks keep it from going any further. And then, there's springs in here. When you push, 
backwards, there's surge brakes on this trailer. Nothing damaged there. It was just these two welds, these two blocks. So we got those rewelded. Technically, three welds broke, and then shock absorber. So it wasn't really tough. And then rebent a couple things that, when things were going crazy, they bent thin metal stuff. So we're gonna hug it up to 4020 first, just slap it around, slam on the brakes with no weight. And we'll just slowly build it up, test it, and I think it's safe. And if it does break, which it did yesterday, then uh, two days ago, then we had the safety chain. So it's a good reminder, always do safety chain. And then- uh, Those wagons would have been totaled if we didn't have that safety chain. Yeah, safety chain was grabbing everything. Okay, here we go. Starting the home field. This was planned April 13th. Old changer in here. Should be good to go. Man, those are some big ears. It should get uh, smaller ears once we get out here because those were just the ends that probably had like two passes of anhydrous right there. Dude, we are averaging 300. It's just holding 300. Oh my gosh. My yield monitor was literally dialed in, like perfectly dialed in on the last load I checked. That just went 338. No way, something's off here. Something is off here. Holy crap. They are big ears through there, but there's no way. Holy crap, this is some good corn. Okay, here we go. We'll see how this corn does here. This is 79.45. This is uh, a hybrid that's uh, one of Whipple's hybrids that uh, is not as good as 78, 76, I don't think, but it should still be decent. So there it's averaging 325, 350, 302. 285, 255. There we go, we got some 338, 314. Okay, I wanna get this into town to make sure my yield monitor's off. The last load we took in 15 minutes ago was spot on. So unless I'm going crazy or something, I don't know. It's my third year farming. I don't deserve this good of corn. I need more bad years first to be humble. The good thing is it's yielded good. The bad thing is that means I didn't sell enough corn because uh, I was only like 65% sold before harvest started. So on, on, on a way lower average yield than this. We averaged there 280 if my numbers are correct. I'm going to take this into the elevator just to see. I just. My dad's working on the other wagon, fixing the other wagon, the electric on that. So I just figured I'd take it in quick. Just because I'm like a kid on Christmas, all hyped up. The crazy thing is, that's not even like the best, best part of the fields. It, it's like an average, average part of the field, but it's not, it's not the best. So that's what's going to be, uh, that's what's going to be crazy. Because I'm like, if that's doing that, then what is the best part of the field going to do? So I got the sheet on that entire load. We were off by 60 pounds. So basically a bushel. We were off by a bushel, which means the corn is actually yielding really, really good. I thought it was the case because the last load came in like spot on. So, wow, that is, that is crazy guys. Like I said, young guy like me does not deserve this. I need worse crops. Cause I'm gonna get a little too excited. We are picking. We're gonna try and get the, uh, these two wagons full. The co-op closes in 10 minutes, but we're like half a mile away. And I can get this filled pretty darn quick, actually. Okay, we got, it is the next day now. And it's been started combine this morning while I went and ran three different errands. We had to get a starter for 4020 some starter fluid. She's having a tough time starting and uh, we think the starter is pretty much bad. And then Spencer's already taken one load to town that we had picked from yesterday or two days ago um, and left in the shed. And then he's got one more that he's just taking now. It's gonna take Spencer a while to dump that wagon even though we're uh, literally a mile away from the co-op. Uh, it's just, I think there's gonna be a line and stuff. So I can take my sweet time because I'm gonna get full way before he gets back. Spence is trying to squeeze his way through here and come back here. We came to a stop here. We got uh, my straw chopper, like low speed wiring keeps coming on here. So we're trying to diagnose that, 
just because I don't want to get that thing plug, plugged. So it's probably better just to spend 20 minutes checking into it before you plug the whole chopper. So we're thinking there's actually just grease on the sensor here that Spencer's gonna try cleaning off here. I almost don't want to move it after. Maybe, yeah. After touching it. No. Maybe we try it. Straw chopper, no light. We got it. I think we got her fixed, so that is good. Because if it's a straw chopper, ah. And another one bites the dust. Spencer's off. We are rolling. Right now I'm just cutting through the field and I'm about to the shed, which is about a quarter mile so far through the field or half a mile so far through the field. And this strip's currently averaging 306. And it's actually off under by like one or two bushels. So it's actually 307 or 308. That is pure light. I, I've, I've never seen this. I've never seen this ever, ever. I've only been farming three years, but it's just insane. Steeper hills. Good thing we don't have two full wagons. I don't know if we'd make it. three hours since I've seen you guys and me and Spencer just moving along. He's unloading on the go perfectly even though we got some sketchy hills to go through. I haven't yet hit the auger on the wagon so that's good because like some of the hills are like tipping like this and this and your auger's swinging down into the wagon. It's a little sketchy but it makes it fun and yields are still really good so we are cruising along. Luckily the elevator's open till seven o'clock tonight. Every other night for corn, it's been open until only 4.30, and it's kind of screwed us over a little bit with some time, so that'll be nice to get a couple more loads in for sure, yeah, tonight. Does anybody else's fuel handles get crazy dirty and sticky? I swear, I've seen one other person have the same thing. Like the handle, we didn't do anything to it. It's just crazy dirty and sticky. We gotta throw fuel in her real quick, cause she's low and Spencer's head to town quick with another load. And that's gonna take a while, probably like 15 minutes. If he was in the combine, we're gonna get rolling again. Let's try to see if we can beat Spencer. We are still rolling here. The elevator closed at 721, so the elevator closed, so we're gonna, we're gonna do two wagons. We're gonna fill two wagons tonight and then head over to Pizza Ranch because we skip lunch. All we do is we just skip lunch, go get a nice salad at Pizza Ranch, potatoes, ah, it's the best, man. It is the best. It's the next morning now and put some fuel in the combine here because that thing eats a lot of fuel and we're gonna try and push hard today. It's about seven o'clock right now, so the co-op just opened. Spencer's gonna get that grain in. By the time he gets back, I should have a full load. We've got like 60 acres left. We only did 23 acres yesterday, but we're feeling that good. It's tough to move a lot of grain that quick, especially on this farm, the way it's designed. I always feel so bad on chilly mornings turning the combine up. I 
It's just parts. It's just parts. That's my straw chopper sensor going off. I think I just got to get out and clean the sensor again uh, because it's just watching the call it bearing go around a bunch of times, and if it's dirty, then it sends me the low uh, low speed warning because everything else is working good. Off with another load, quick. Loading. How's she been out there? What? How's she been out there? Something good. It's a nice day. So one thing is our fungicide trial I got to when I had headphones and was jamming to screamo music because that alarm was going off. I got to that and that showed about an eight bushel advantage, which is like right at break even. Uh, I thought it was going to show at least like a 20 or 30 bushel advantage with fungicide on there and it did not. So it was the worst part of the farm and it was like the 40 CSR2 part of the farm and uh, those strips on the non-fungicide I think averaged like 273 and then on the fungicide they averaged like 2, uh, what would be the math, 280 or 281 or something like that with the fungicide. So. Um, so yeah, it, it did it, uh, the, the plant health is a lot higher quality. If we had a windstorm, I bet it'd pay a little more because this stuff would still be sanding a lot better than the stuff without fungicide, but it, it I thought I was going to see a lot more than that. So we have some check strips, we have some check strips on the corn on corn farm and, uh, that'll be interesting too. It's a crick bottom. It had a little more tar spot than this stuff. And Spence is off with another load. And we are done with this field. Uh, my green star is saying 277 and my field view is saying 275. So I'll take the lower of them, 275. And uh, that's not bad. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a record for this field. Spencer is celebrating. Spencer is celebrating. So that is uh, that is really crazy for this field. If you guys are in Iowa um, and you know you you understand the CSR2 index, this is only a 55 CSR2 field, and so for it to go 275 is uh, is is really 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 good. Field average 275, baby. Woo. <laughs> you pull her across? Yeah, I should be good. Okay. Until to the left, just yell. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. He's gonna make the sketchy cross in here. He's got 54 or 55,000 pounds on him. 54, 140. And he should be good. We're gonna see. I should probably talk to him. You're looking good, looking good. You said you wanna be on the right side, right? Perfect. You're good. You're good. Now, question is, can he pull her? He's trying to. He's trying to pull her. He should be good. My dad struggled with the same thing, getting her out of here, pulling her up here. He's got to find the lowest route and the lowest steepness here to pull her up this hill here. You could go right, too, if you want to go right. Come on, Spence! He's got her. He's got her. He's slipping a ton right now, but he's not, uh, he's not power hopping. Okay, guys. We just got done adding up all the scale tickets for the farm. Went and got the total from the co-op there. We are actually high by five bushel an acre. So instead of 275, it went 270, which is a little... Well, that was five bushels off than I was expecting, but it um, is absolutely insane for this farm. I would never expected this farm to go 270 on corn. Like it's a 55 CSR2 farm. It's not amazing, but it did pretty darn amazing. Now we have 60 acres of corn left. We got to knock out um, here, and then we got to go harvest some of Spencer's stuff. We have like 50 acres of his. That's about 90 miles away. And then we have 40 acres or 45 acres um, of custom farming that we're gonna do right next to his, and it's the farm I bought. And so since I bought it, I asked the 
previous owner if I could harvest it because he never harvested it, he had it custom harvested. So I get all the yield maps for it because when we had tile and stuff, it's super nice to have the yield maps. So that is the plan. We're gonna have uh, Nate, actually Nate, the guy in like two videos ago that was around the Haggy, he's gonna haul this combine up there so we can get it up there and uh, go harvest that stuff. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.